swallowing up parts of Japan. The Mississippi River crests just shy of historic proportions. The Libyan warplanes bombing rebel positions. Six more Americans killed in Afghanistan. Violence. Destruction. Devastation. Mass chaos. We all know someday there's going to be Judgment Day. Someday. The entire world is watching. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Word of the Lord. Thanks for watching and staying tuned. We have a good program for you tonight. We're going to be continuing some, some thoughts that we've done previously in the previous weeks. And I'm bringing some more information on the homosexual lifestyle. Let's go ahead and put that out there just so people can be watching. Uh, we've got some... Letters from the, from the mailbag, from the email bag, and uh, boy, there's some doozies too. We're going to be going over those. But here's our contact information. Uh, the Church of Christ, 250 the Boulevard is where we meet. There in Eden, 278 uh, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me. If you want a uh, uh, copy of this program, a DVD, if you like a Bible study, you can re reach me at the Lord at gmail.com. All these are Bible ways you can talk to us. And what we're going to point out tonight is it's interesting how how open we are to people, how we put ourselves out there, yet so many people choose to get all their information from, from a third or fourth source and then want to quote us from those notes. But nonetheless, let me give you our content information. Here we go. The Church of Christ meets at 823 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, 120 American Legion Boulevard in Danville. If you'd like to worship with them, that's where you can uh, uh, find the saints meeting in those respective towns. And if we can assist you in any way we want to, I want to remind you of a religious review coming up tonight at 10.30 after the news. So stay tuned for that. I think Mark and Mike are going to be uh, doing some uh, uh, more information uh, to kind of whet your appetite with uh, some things tonight, I think. And uh, nonetheless, stay tuned for religious review coming up after the news. Now, as I said previously, we're going to be going over some information that uh, are continuing some information, Tramp thought, that we began uh, last week. We did a lesson on the homosexual agenda and how the attempt is to make a, a uh, ungodly lifestyle acceptable so that the ungodly individuals who are living in that lifestyle can then fit nor fit be in the norm. They can be normal, taking a, a, a normal lifestyle. Now, I want you to know that you don't need to hate me for that. But yet, that's usually what happens. Jesus said in John uh, 15 and verse uh, 22. Let me get our, our Bible program up there. But John 15 and verse 22. He said, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had, had, no, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin, he that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which, which none other men had, did, had none other men did, they had not had sin. But now they have uh, both seen and hated both me and my father. But you know what? When you start hating the word of God, not only do you hate Jesus who gave us his word, but you actually hate the one who sent him with the word, and that was, that's the father. And that's really what we're, we're, we're getting into. We're actually getting uh, hate, people who hate us for our stand on uh, positions like this. Now, this is from a previous show uh, a couple of years ago, but it was actually on, we were actually touching on this same idea, homosexuality, and here's the call that, uh, uh, that, that came in. It's, it's not easy. It's, it's easy to find out whether you really believe it or not. You're on the work of the Lord. Welcome to the program. I'd like to ask you a question. You were talking about the hate crime bills a while ago. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the Matthew Shepard story? I am. Okay. Uh, kind of. I mean, I'm not, I didn't follow a whole lot, but I know the general gist of it. Uh, well, what, what, tell me what you know about it. He was a homosexual that was, that was beaten and killed because he was a homosexual. 
Okay, uh, do, do, do you think that's right that he was killed because of uh, his uh, sexual orientation? Do you think it's right for someone to be killed because don't they're a man or a woman? Don't what, what difference does it have to make a sexual orientation? I think it's wrong for someone to be killed. Okay, that, okay, I'm glad to hear that. I'm Sam? glad to hear that out of your mouth. But wh what difference does it have to make whether? But you, you're still a hater. I am. Yeah. You're why? A hater. Why? Because you. Because why? Why you teach? Oh, come on, Jackie. You, you are a hater. No. Hate will end of the kingdom of heaven. No. Are, do you hate me for being a hater? Uh, for you to speak against Billy Graham too. He's the man of God, and let me tell you. I doubt it. You got to watch. Give me, give me, give me, give me some reasons why he's a man of God. Because he preaches the word of God. He Whether does. You think he does or not? He he preaches the word of God. Let's see what he preaches. The Baptist Church is it in the word of God? You are a. Hater. Is it in the word of God? You are a Is hater. it in the word of God, Jackie? You are a. Hater. Are you upset because the word's kind of hitting home with you? You are. You are. Are, are, you, are you getting upset because no hate is, will enter heaven, sir? No, I, I don't hate anybody. I hate the sin, and I I hate what happened to Matthew Shepard. All right. Now, I'm a hater. That's all we can say. I'm a hater. I'm a hater. Friends, I'm not a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm, I'm not a hater of, of people. I hate sin. I hate the sin that they're entangled in, and I hate the, a lot of times the reason why they're entangled in it. And a lot of times the reason why they're entangled in it is because no one will tell them the truth. No one will help them get out of it. And so then, you know, then you become the bad person when you're trying to, to untangle them. When you're trying to help the person, you, you, uh, uh, you're the one who gets hurt. One time, uh, my wife and I were walking. We were down uh, back in the country, back home in Texas, and my wife and I were, uh, were out walking on the country roads, and our dog uh, was running around, and she jumped a rabbit or something. She took off running, and she got tangled up in a barbed wire fence. So we ran over, and we're trying to get her out of this barbed wire fence, <clears throat> And when we're trying to get her leg undone, it's hurting her. And so what she does is she reaches over, she snaps and bites my wife. Now, we were trying to help, but the dog bit my wife because she thought that we were hurting her. Now, that's what people do today. You try to help them get out of their sin, and one thing they do is they turn around, they'll bite you, and they'll call you the hater. No, friends, I'm not the hater. I'm not the hater. Notice this. In, uh, in, in Luke... Chapter 6, verse 22, let's just notice. Uh, get my, I didn't come up here. Here we go. Luke 6 and verse 22. Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate from you their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. You can say all you want to about me, friends. I'm not a hater. I'm simply giving you some information. And if that makes you uh, mad at me, then that's on you. That's not on me. But now, here's why I say people are hating on me. It's because of what was said last week on A Word from the Lord and Religious Review. Now, here's the email. Here's the emails that have been coming in uh, uh, in, in regard to that program. Now, I want you to pay special attention to some of the language. It's very important. Pay attention to some of the language and keep in mind that I'm supposed to be the hater, okay? You keep that in mind. But listen to some of the language. And I, I, try, I tried to enlarge this the best I could. <clears throat> but it says, Greetings. I recently saw screenshots from your program, Religious Review. Now, did you hear that? I recently saw screenshots of your program. In other words, Someone took a snapshot of their picture, of their, of their TV, and they posted it on the Internet. So the person writing, immediately you know they didn't watch the program. You immediately know they didn't watch the program. They simply saw a snapshot, and then they're going to make their judgments, and that's exactly what they are, upon what they saw. On it, a man is ranting about homosexuality. Now, I don't see how you get ranting from a picture. Especially since you didn't watch the program. But it says a man is ranting about homosexuality. He's making calls for repeated suppression, shaming, and frankly outright attacks against the gay members of the community. Now friends, you can have a DVD. We give away DVDs. I didn't say that. 
I never said go out and attack gay members of the community. Never once. But remember, this person is getting all the information from a website. All right? He says, is this part of your station's values? Uh, does your station condone this sort of hate speech? Remember, I'm the hater here. But this person is so full of hatred for the hate speakers that he's actually getting information second or third hand and not hearing it the first time. Now that's not only hateful, that's foolish. The Bible says the fool answers the matter before he hears it. So here you have, here you have a foolish hater hating on me, saying that I'm a hater when really I'm not a hater. All right? Now, uh, this is, you know, so this is what we're talking about. This is full of hate, all right? Uh, he goes on to say, It is my intention to contact, uh, uh, contact them and let them know the kind of vicious, insane hate that their products are supporting. He's talking about supporters of, this, of, the, of the TV program. Well, you know what? The supporters of this TV program, I'll give you the contact information for those who support this TV program. If you, would, uh, if you really want, want that, let me see here. I'm on number five here. Here we go. You want to support this TV program? You just write all you want to. Here we go. Here's the address for the support for the supporter of this program. Here's another. Here's some more addresses right here. 823 Starling Avenue, uh, Avenue, Martinsville, Virginia. 24112 American Legion, 120 American Legion, Danville, Virginia. I don't know what the zip code is, but there are, these are the supporters of this program. So if you want to write a vicious letter talking about people who support this program, who sponsor this program, who put this program on, you just knock yourself out, friend. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. All right? And that's what I'm talking about. And this is just one of them, friends. Here's another one. Here's another one. I'm writing to express my shock and outrage that the program like Religious Review would be aired in the United States of America in the year 2011. The rhetoric used in demeaning of homosexuals is frightening and dangerous. Now watch it. Now they're going to tell you what the rhetoric was that, that was used. Here are some examples of violent language used on the program when referring to homosexuals. Eliminate, quote, get rid of, quote, forcibly stop, do battle, take to the streets. Now, friends, this information didn't come from me. I didn't say that about homosexuals. I didn't say eliminate, take to the streets, forcefully stop, get rid of, do battle with. I didn't say that. That's what someone wrote on a website. See? Again, you have individuals getting their information, not from this program, you know, not from this program, but a second and third party, second and third hand, you know, it's kind of like the old song, I heard it from a friend who, heard it from a friend who, heard it from another. And so now this got to be true. You know, it's got to be true because I went down to the barber shop and heard it at the, at the hair salon and I heard it from my cousin's uncle's third, third wife's brother down to the butcher shop. Got to be true. Friends, why don't, you just, why don't you just tune in? Why don't you examine? Why don't you investigate? We give, we give away a free copy of it, all right? And then it says, then this person goes on, this is Sandra uh, Whitenack, White White says, uh, please relate to the man spewing this nonsense that a lot of men who have attacked homosexuals in a similar manner to his have been exposed as homosexuals themselves. Hey, investigate. I'm not a homosexual. Never have been. Never intend to be. All right? So... You can investigate all you want to. What you'll find is, you'll find that we're speaking the truth about a lifestyle that the Bible condemns. And by the way, and by the way, even though someone might be exposing something to be wrong, and they themselves might be involved in it, does that change the fact that it's still wrong? I mean, if you're going to, let, let's just take, for example, that preacher in Colorado who was found out to be a homosexual when he was preaching against it. Well, wait a minute. If it's not wrong to be homosexual, why are you condemning him, uh, you know, for being a part of it? You ought to applaud him. You ought to, uh, you know, lift him up as an icon, you know, a great uh, source of virtue. Here's another one. This is from Thomas Braun. All right? It has been brought to my attention. Now, you hear the words? 
it's been brought to my attention that you are broadcasting hate-filled rants directed at gays, saying that gays are going to hell and that there is a gay agenda in the United States with people such as Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and President Obama involved in the conspiracy to force gays onto the general, general population. Friends, I didn't say that they were trying to force, that they are, they're involved in the conspiracy. I simply showed you a website that their name was listed on as supporting what that website was doing. It's called uh, It Gets Better Project. Now, again, did you hear how it started? It's been brought to my attention. He didn't hear it. He didn't see it. He was just getting his information second and third hands, friends. Don't quote us from your notes. Don't quote us from someone else's notes. You know, you've got all the information you need right here. Just tune in. WGSR 47.1. That's, that's all you need to do. All right. He goes on to say, this guy goes on to say that, um, uh, let's see, I served in the United States Air Force at duty station across the world. Gay sexual orientation is a natural and universal phenomenon, not only in humans and mammals, but in all species of plants and animals. Well, there you go. We're just plants and animals. Hey, see, we're not made a little lower than the angels, Hebrews 2, 9. We're actually made a little higher than the apes. So we're just, we're just animals. Is that really the case? Uh, and is it, uh, is it hateful? Is it hateful simply to point out what the Bible is saying about this? All right. You're spreading hate. It's, it's sad to see that you're spreading hate. All right. Well, that's Thomas Brown. Now, here's another one. Boy, it just keeps on coming. The only real Christians on my street are a gay couple. They brought meals for years after my husband died. They helped the poor and never brag about it. The churchgoers on my street talk, but ne talk the talk, but never walk the walk. They don't seem to understand the words, judge not, lest ye be not judged. For as ye judge, ye shall be judged. So in the judgment day, the mean people who call themselves Christians and who do pray so everyone can hear them, will not be finding favor with God. And this is from uh, Mrs. Maggie, Maggie Macklin. Now, uh, again, these are the people, you know, don't judge the homosexuals, because if you do, you're being mean and hateful, and you're judging us. See, friends, we're not the haters. We're not the haters. And did I not say in that very program, you just go back and recall, I said the very thing that the homosexual agenda does in order to make the homosexual lifestyle normal is call the ones who oppose the homosexual lifestyle, make them out to be the bad guy. That's the very thing I said. That's the very thing that Marshall Kirk said and Hunter Madsen said in their book, After the Ball and uh, uh, Overhauling America. That's what they said. They said make the ones who are, in op who are in opposition to the homosexual lifetime make them out a bad guy. Is that not what these emails are doing? See, friends, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. I hate to be the one that says, look, the very things that I said would happen are indeed happening. And so here comes the hate mail. Now, friends, let me just make a point here about judging. Let me just show you that it is a righteous thing to judge. Now, most people are going to say, well, the first place he's going to go is he's going to go to John 7, 24, where Jesus said, judge, judge not by appearance, but judge righteous judgment. No, I'm not going to go there first. I'm going to go to Genesis. I want to show you, friends, that it is a righteous thing to make a judgment, a righteous judgment, against a perverse lifestyle like the homosexual lifestyle. Not because I hate homosexuals, but I hate homosexuality. I hate what it does to a society. I hate what it does to the individuals who are involved in it. That's why I hate it. But I don't hate the, I don't hate the homosexual. I want to help them get out. That's why I'm giving them information that no one else is going to give them. That's why we showed the, so, the, the movie, It's Not Gay. It's because we want to help them. We want to help them to see, open their eyes, open the eyes of their understanding so that they can be enlightened unto the dangers and the, uh, the, the deadly uh, side effects of a homosexual lifestyle, okay? Now, let me show you why it's a righteous thing to judge. In Genesis 9, 19, verses 4 through 9, here, uh, here you have two angels going down to Sodom and Gomorrah, 
And they're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot is there. Lot, the nephew of Abraham, is there. And here is what the, the Bible says. But before they lay down, the men of the city, Lot invites them into the house. Before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, encompassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in unto thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now, I don't think they're wanting them to come out so that they can have a meet and greet. As a matter of fact, the, the idea of knowing them in the Bible is synonymous with sexual relations. All right, in the course of time, Adam knew his wife and she conceived. Genesis chapter 4. So here he is, they're wanting to have they're wanting to have carnal knowledge with these men. They're wanting to have sexual relations, abuse them. They're sodomites. Thus, that's why we call them, that's why we say sodomites today. Now notice this. So that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, now watch it, what Lot said. I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Now, Lot is saying that what they were wanting to do to these individuals was wicked. Now, was Lot judging? Was Lot hateful? Was Lot being mean? Was Lot going to be the ones that, the ones that was causing trouble? Well, yeah, in a sense he was causing trouble because he was telling the truth. And you may say, well, you know, he shouldn't have said that. He shouldn't have said that. He shouldn't have been judging them, saying they're wicked. You know what? The same thing that happened to Lot is the same thing that happens today. When you say that the homosexual lifestyle is wicked, then you get criticized and you actually become the object of the hate. Look what happened to Lot. Look what happened to Lot. And they said, this is the men of the city, they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fella, talking about Lot, this one fella came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. You don't even belong here, Lot. You came in. So you moved down here. You don't even belong here in Sodom and Gomorrah. You're a stranger. You're an outsider come moving in. And you come in to judge us. Now, let me just say this for all the non-homosexuals out there, like the man that called in with Mark and Micah. Well, y'all came up from Texas. Well, whoop-de-doo. Does it matter where you came from? Does right and wrong, is it, is it based upon where you come from? Or is it a higher standard? Now, look at this. They said, Lot, you came into sojourn, and now you're going to be a judge. That's what people say to us. Y'all come up from Texas and y'all just want to judge us all the time. No, friends, the Bible was here long before Texas was even in existence. The Bible was here a long time before North Carolina was in existence. It's the standard for right and wrong, and it doesn't matter if you're in Virginia or North Carolina or Texas. You still need to live according to this book. They said, he came in and he's going to be a judge among us. Now watch it. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. They said, you know what? You're going to start judging us? We're going to start hating you. We're going to start putting our efforts, and we're going to make the person who's pointing out the evil, we're going to make them the bad guy. Sounds to me like, sounds to me like Marshall Kirk and Hunter Madsen when they wrote their book, Overhauling America, and how to get the homosexual agenda moving how to make it more uh, widely acceptable, sound like they took a page right out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Look, oh, wait a minute. Someone comes in and is going to say that we're bad, that we're wrong, that we're wicked. Well, we're going to do worse to them than we would to the people who, who are not opposing us. Now, is that mean? Is that hateful? Was Lot wicked? Was he the bad guy? Was he the hater? Was he the judger in this? Was he the evil judger? Let me tell you what the Bible says about Lot. 
Let me know what the Bible says about Lot. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, let me see if I can just put this up here. 2 Peter 2, verse 7 and 8. Peter says that God delivered just Lot. He was just. He was righteous. Justified Lot. He delivered just Lot who was vexed with the filthy conversation, the filthy manner of life, the filthy lifestyle of the wicked. Now Peter is condemning the folks on Sodom and Gomorrah who wanted to have knowledge with the men. Right? All right? Peter says Lot was just and the people of the city were filthy and wicked. Oh, Peter, that's some hate language, hate speech. Hater in the house? I don't think so. Look, this is Peter. This is inspiration here. For that righteous man, talking about Lot, that righteous man, dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Friends, it may be legal in Massachusetts. It may be legal in Hawaii. It may be legal wherever for homosexuality to exist. But you know what? It's not lawful. It's not lawful according to God's word. It may be legal. Man may say, hey, it's fine. But that don't mean it's lawful, not according to God's law. And Peter says that Lot was righteous. He says that he was just. He says that he had a righteous soul and that he was living amongst the filthy lifestyles of wicked people and that he was living amongst individuals who were unlawful in their deeds. And he says in verse 9, he says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly, that's, right, that's Lot, out of the temptations and reserve the unjust, that's Sodom and Gomorrah, unto the day of judgment to be punished. Now, friends, if I say the same thing that Peter's saying, and if I say the same thing that Lot is saying about individuals who are engaged in the same lifestyle that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were involved in, am I not righteous and just in doing it? Is it not a good thing to expose the wickedness? Why am I the hater? Why am I the one who's being opposed? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's because John chapter 3 and verse 19. John 3, 19. This is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. That's right, friends. We're saying shine the light of truth on us, and we'll stand here. And when we start shining the light, people scatter and scurry, and they say, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to see it. We don't want you exposing the truth and calling us wicked and unjust and ungodly. That's what the Bible calls you. Not me. See? No, no, friends, I'm not the hater. I'm not the hater. The haters are the ones who won't tell you the truth. The haters are the ones who won't demonstrate that they love you enough to tell you the truth. They actually will change the truth so that you can continue the way you are. Now, friends, that's, that's hate. True love, true love's going to tell you the truth. True love's going to tell you the truth. Now, Lot, righteous. Vex his righteous soul. Just Lot. But he was living among Sodom and Gomorrah. He was living in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodomites and the Gomorrahites. Now, now friends, why is it? Why is it that people say that Greensboro is Gomorrah's borough? Now, why are you getting mad? I'll tell you what. It must be the case 
that there's a lot of homosexual life, uh, homosexuals in, in Greensboro to have a name like that. And if I were righteous people, if I were godly people and I were concerned about being righteous, I would not want the name of my town, the town that I lived in, to be known as Gomorrah's Borough. And I would make a stand against a lifestyle that's giving that's giving uh, the city a name that's associated with one of the most wicked cities in history. But you must like it because you're standing up for it. You're standing up and promoting the lifestyle. How do I know you're doing it? Because look at this letter. Look at this letter. I'm sorry, this is, from, this is continuing from the first lady. She said, homosexuals don't choose to be homosexuals. We'll deal with that later. Now, here's another letter. Here's another letter. And uh, this is very interesting who it's from. He says, my name is Randall Keeney. I am the priest at St. Barnabas Episcopal Church in Greensboro. I am writing with a concern about a program available at your station. It is called Religious Review. I became aware of it through an article on the website. And they would want me to say what the website is. Friends, do you hear again what this man's doing? Now you talk about uh, judging righteous judgment. Here is a man who's getting his information about this program, and he's supposed to be a priest. He's supposed to be a priest, and he's not supposed to make unrighteous judgment, but yet he's getting his information from an article on a website that is actually misquoting and putting lies about what we actually said on the program. Now I think there's a verse in the Bible about being a partaker of another man's sins. Here he is right here. Here is priest, right reverend, so-called right reverend Randall Kinney, and he's getting information from a website about our program. So obviously he didn't, he didn't listen to it. He didn't watch it. And like I said, they'd want us to say what the website was. But we're not. But you see, so here is, here is what's happening to Greensboro. You've got the priest at St. Barnabas Episcopal Church in Greensboro that's actually promoting the lifestyle. Promoting the lifestyle. He goes on to say, he goes on to say, he says, when this man lists the names of people he suggests are homosexuals or supports homosexuals, I simply listed the names of people that were on the website supporting It Gets Better, the It Gets Better Project. And the ones that I said were homosexuals are known to be homosexuals. Ellen Degenerate, see? Everybody knows she's a homosexual. I didn't go, I didn't, I didn't say I didn't uh, uh, project that perhaps some of these people were unless I knew for a fact they were. But their names were listed on the website. I didn't put those names up there. I'm simply reading the names. Why are you getting mad at me? It's not my website. See? In calling for religious people to respond to these folks, he used terms and phrases, eliminate, get rid of, forcibly stop, do battle, take to the streets. Now, it seemed like I heard that before. Seems like I heard that before from someone else who said, I got this information from a website. Now, friends, this is the problem. You got the priest who's actually defending the homosexual lifestyle. Now, he says, now, nah, not to be overly dramatic, but this is insane and dangerous. I'll tell you what's just as insane and dangerous is for someone like you to start quoting someone like this guy and saying that I said it. Now, if anybody want to talk about slander, I think I have the case right here. All right? Now, being made aware of it, you may be comfortable with what he's saying and what may result from what he's saying. Friends, all I'm saying is you need to stop being homosexual. Now, boy, that's going to turn the world upside down, isn't it? Yeah, sue me for saying you, you shouldn't be a homosexual. All right? Now, but here's the problem. Now, you say, well, how do I know that he's a problem? Well... Here's how I know he's a problem. It's because the Episcopal Church is wrought, is wrought with 
the home, promoting the homosexuality, homosexual lifestyle. This is from their newsletter. This is from the St. Uh, Barnabas Episcopal Church newsletter. Uh, Piedmont Triad Integrity. Community of GLBT Eucharist. Please join us as Piedmont Triad Integrity celebrates its first LGBT Eucharist on Saturday, April 17th, 6 p.m., St. Andrew's uh, Episcopal Church. PTI is an, is an Integrity USA group of the Episcopal Church for the social, spiritual, and uh, strategic good of the Piedmont Trion. It's for the good of the Piedmont Trion? Friends, I'm showing you. I'm showing you the dangers of the homosexual lifestyle, and they're saying it's for the benefit of, of, of the Piedmont Triad. I'm saying it's a danger. I'm saying it's, it's dangerous to it. Now, I'm giving you information to show you why it's dangerous. Their biggest defense is, don't say anything bad about it, because they're, they're trying to be good. Well, if you call that being good, being helpful, Integrity USA has been a faithful witness of God's exclu inclusive love to the Episcopal Church and the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. They are working for the full inclusion of all the, bab uh, of all the baptized in all the sacraments. So they're working to make sure that the Episcopal Church is full-fledged support of homosexuality. Friends, it, it, it'll get there. You know how I know? Because the Episcopal Church has been battling this thing for a long time. You may recall, I'm going to play you the video clip, but you may recall, they actually had the first gay bishop, you know, Gene Robinson. Big to do was made about in the news. So it's coming. Uh, go ahead and put the phone lines up. I, I think we've got some calls coming in over there, and <clears throat> we're going to run out of time, so we'll go ahead and put that up. Put the phone lines up and, uh, and let the folks through. Now, friends, what I'm going to do I'm going to try to get to this before the, the night's over. But I'm going to show you just how dangerous this lifestyle is. I'm going to show you some of the side effects, some of the dangers of it, in comparison to another disease, so-called disease. I'll call it disease that fa that, that for, for the sake of, of comparison here. Social problem, how about that? And just see if it doesn't stand out as just as bad or worse as another problem in our society, okay? You're on the work of the Lord. Yeah, I've been preaching, talking about this. You must be doing something right. People get all offended about, uh, about the homosexual stuff. Oh, like I said, like I said, appreciate you just finally somebody standing up about the stuff. Like if you're not doing nothing right, people will be offended. Right. So I'm glad you somebody doing that. And if you was not doing nothing right, why would people get mad? Because usually we, uh, uh, what y'all mean? Like I heard my teacher used to say, you don't uh, when you hear the dog don't bark unless you hit with a stone. So if they get offended, God should, like I said, He would have to apologize. If you let all these homosexuals in preaching, He would have to go back and apologize for what He done to people in Sodom and Gomorrah. But God don't have to do that. That's why. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Well, that, you know, and, and, and you know, this is a point that we made in class this very night. Tonight in class on, at 250 Boulevard, we made this point about in Genesis 1 when God made man and woman. We recognize God made man and woman, and thus it shouldn't be uh, two men. But how come we don't recognize it when it comes to just regular marriage, traditional marriage that it's supposed to be? It should just be man, one man and one woman. You know, if we get it with homosexuals, we ought to get it with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, scriptural marriage as well. Yeah. So, uh, but, and that's, another, and that's another area where we're trying to combat. You know, we try to teach people, look, this is the way God intended for marriage to be, one man and one woman for life. And that eliminates, you know, multiple marriages, multiple uh, 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 mates, and it certainly, you know, eliminates uh, two men or two women or a man and his dog and whatever else he wants to marry, you know. It eliminates all that foolishness. Yeah, because they live right now, they, that way this war is now, they want to just flush all the family tradition and family values down the toilet. Well, yeah. that's true. But I'll say this, sir, the problem and this is what I'm demonstrating right here is the problem 
uh, one of the problems that are one of the reasons why it's the problem is so prevalent is because you got people in the church, the churches, who won't stand up against it and do what's right. And the reason why I know they won't do it is because they won't do it on something as simple as, say, instrumental music. Or they won't do it on something as simple as uh, giving on the first day of the week. They won't stand up and say, this is what the Lord says, we're going to do what the Lord says on this little area. So it doesn't really surprise me that they won't stand up and make a, uh, make a fuss or, you know, make a big stand against something like homosexuality. Because, man, it's, you know, that's a big, that's a big uh, stand. You have to make a big stand to oppose that. Oh, so, yeah. But I, don't, I got a question for you. Does these people, do they don't even preach about Son Gomorrah or they don't preach about the part, they just leave that out of the Bible because that's, because that, God, that can, well. They, in the Bible, time yeah, time. they have their own little twist on it. I think they would say Sodom and Gomorrah was was inhospitable. Huh. You know, they yeah. just weren't they just weren't very hospitable. I just want I just want to give you a compliment. Thank you. Okay, for well, I appreciate that. it. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, interesting. Um, you know, one of the arguments I've heard people say is, well, people in Sodom and Gomorrah were inhospitable. Well, I don't think that's what they wanted to do to those two guys. I don't think, like I said, I don't think they brought them a, you know, a, you know, housewarming present or. Welcome to the community box. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, how you doing this evening? I'm doing wonderful. At the uh, the other broadcast of What's the Bible Say, there's a gentleman who's coming to investigate, and I think that's a great thing. I think that's a good thing. I think that there should be uh, investigation in everything, and not just go to a blog site and you know take their word for it. And because I mean, if you do that, you might end up believing a man if he said, uh, well. Uh, all you have to do to get to heaven is just sit down and say a prayer. Right. And that's, I'm sure there's a blog site somewhere that says that. And if people aren't going to investigate and open up the Bible and study, like that gentleman who was uh, talking about uh, Clarksville, Texas, mm -hmm. then they're never going to get the truth. So I, I applaud that man. And if he's going to that tent meeting you're having over in Martinsville, I'm going to be right there to investigate with him. Well, I tell you, I tell you, I'll just, I'll just tell the, the, the community that man is actually the brother-in-law, ex-brother-in-law of Marty Roberts. Well, that don't matter. He can vote. I, I, I know, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying though. So, so here, you know, we've already, we've already demonstrated that the doctrine that that he believes, and they're in the same, same uh, realm of, of belief there. Uh, you know, well, we don't. I'm, I'm saying we don't have anything to hide from it. You know, my, well, my point I, is, we had his brother-in-law on and had a debate with, over apostolic doctrine, and so we certainly don't have anything to hide. You know, as far as people investigating us, because his own his own brother-in-law came on this on this very set right here, stood right here. So. I had to, I was involved with all kinds of uh, non-Christian, non-claiming to be Christian, and supposed Christian uh, religions and worship, and. I kept investigating, so if he keeps investigating, uh, he's gonna have to. It has to lead him to the truth, so right. that's a good thing. Well, I hope so. I hope it won't. I hope it won't. I hope it won't harden him. I hope it'll soften him up. Well, keep keep doing a good work. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your call. All right, now, <clears throat> but this is this is. Boy, they just keep coming up on that line too, don't they? All right, you on the word from the Lord? Yeah, I just uh, you had mentioned uh, Obama earlier and his support for the, the gay community. I uh, don't know if your viewers are aware of it, but last year he uh, had proclaimed the full month of June as lesbian, uh, gay, bisexual, trans transgender month. I don't support him. I do not call him my president because he is, is not a Christian. Uh, a Christian president would not support that. Well, I just want to make it, make com but, make it but, comment. It but, can be easily uh, found... Uh, by going to whitehouse.gov and then looking up proclamations. Okay, but hang on a second. Will you stay on line for a second? I'm sorry? Uh, uh, stay, stay on line for a second. I'd like to have some dialogue with you. What, sure. what, what do you think about Laura Bush coming out and saying the same thing, though? I disagree with her as well. Yeah, and, that, and that's the point we're saying is all these people will compromise morality just for the sake of power, you know? And that's what makes me sick. Something that, that it really irritates me myself is, is to hear so-called Christians uh, say, well, you know, the Old Testament doesn't apply, 
after the New Testament. And, uh, you know, Christ himself said, you know, I come not to change one jot or iota, iota of the law and uh, of the word. And, and well, you know, the, but... what God believed and laid down the laws, of, you know, two, four thousand years ago, are the same. Nothing, nothing changes. God has changed. But here's the thing, though, about the Old Testament, sir. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. Yeah, well, that's so, quote, but so that's he, but, well, he, but, uh, he, he fulfilled it, though. It. He fulfilled it. He finished it. That's what Colossians 2, 14 says. He nailed it to the cross. So I don't use the Old Testament for my authority. I use it for examples and for, you know, for understanding. Illustrations, you might say. Well, understand. yeah, and, and my point on that was simply just to illustrate that, uh, you know, what was wrong then is wrong now. That, that's my whole point on that. On, on some things. On some things, Mur that's the case. Murder was wrong then, and, and murder's wrong now, just like homosexuality was wrong. Homosexuality right. was wrong then. And but, that's it, because, but that's because it, it, it's condemned in the New Testament. It's not wrong today because it's condemned in the Old Testament. It's wrong today because it's condemned in the New Testament. Well, it's wrong because God said it was wrong. I know, but I'm saying it's it's. I mean, it's I, there's I'm still a difference between the law. I get into a biblical argument. I understand. I understand. The Old Testament. I, I'm just saying. Okay. You know, the, the the what's wrong has always been wrong, and and that's that's what I'm trying to say. But uh, my prior point was I, I can't support a president or Congress or anyone uh, in our government that supports the decay of our civilization and our society, and. That's my point. Okay. Just let folks okay. know where our actual president stands on these issues. That's the tool that they can find to realize what kind of man that we uh, that that the people had elected in there. Okay. So. All right. Thanks for your call. Thank you. Have a good one. <clears throat> and the the president before that, you know, he and his wife were differing. She came out in a book and said, you know, I know we didn't elect Laura Bush, but still, it says something about the family values. You know, when they're going to come out and say, well. I think, you know, it's coming, we might as well support it. No, friends, I say just because it's coming doesn't mean I'm going to support it. You know, I'm going to do everything to stop it. You know, people don't say that about tornadoes and hurricanes. Well, it's coming, let's don't do anything to support it. No, we board up the windows, we get in our storm cellar, we, we prepare for it. So just because it's coming doesn't mean we're going to sit back and take it. We ought to resist it with the truth. But we're not getting that from the religions. We're not getting that from the churches of men and it's no surprise because they won't make a stand for other things that are relatively easy to make a stand for. Like I said, they won't make a stand against, uh, uh, you know, women preachers. They won't make a stand against uh, instrumental music. They won't make a stand against tithing uh, in worship today. So why should we really expect them to make a really bold stand when it comes to things like homosexuality, you see? So, but here is why, especially the Episcopal Church is... Uh, uh, it's where it is. Listen to, uh, here we go. This is back in 2003, I believe. Let's see, no, that didn't, wasn't playing. Let's see if I can get that to play here. Uh oh, no, it's not going to do it. I can get it. It ain't going to stop me. The key question is what is next for the Episcopal Church now that Reverend Gene Robinson is now Bishop Gene Robinson after getting final approval last night by the House of Bishops. Uh, his approval process, this whole confirmation process, was held up for about 24 hours by late allegations which surfaced on Sunday night, uh, but those allegations were dismissed. Uh, findings were that these counts were not, or the charges were not substantial enough. They moved on with the vote, and Robinson was insists that the church members will settle, settle their differences within the church. I also think that, uh, you know, when our church doesn't uh, fall down, when the, when the bishop who happens to be gay walks in, it just uh, gets people a lot more calm about uh, gay and lesbian folk in leadership positions. I don't think um, anyone is going to see anything terribly differently. Okay, so it just makes everybody comfortable with it. Well, let's make sin normal, you know. And then, and then that what we said in our last program? I believe I said that to you folks. Desensitize. That's what they say. We'll desensitize everybody, get everybody used to it. And pretty soon, then when the gay bishop walks in, well, everybody's fine with it. Hey, you know, he's just a gay bishop. So what? You know, no problem. 
We're all used to it. Well, that's where the Episcopal Church was. So it's really no surprise that one of the criticizers, one of the, uh, the individuals who say that I'm hateful and judging is actually the so-called priest at St. Barnabas Episcopal Church in Greensboro. It's no surprise because they've been, they opened that door a long time ago. All right. Now, uh, here we go. Let me just uh, play this one for you. Now, this is, this is the people who are opposed to it. Here's what they say about it. Of this house, we are calling upon the primates of the Anglican Communion under the presidency of the Archbishop of Canterbury and in accordance with Lambeth Resolution 36B to intervene in the pastoral emergency that has overtaken us. Yeah, it overtook them all right because they sat there and did nothing. So they weren't teaching the truth about it. The fact of the matter is, if they had been standing for the truth, this wouldn't have happened. They would, it would not have happened or they'd be ready for it. But now here they go, well, we're pleading because now this bad emergency's happened. You weren't standing for the truth on everything else. Makes sense that you, that you wouldn't stand for the truth that, uh, that this has happened to you, okay? So I'm just saying, friends, that door was opened a long time ago, and now, you know, now they're dealing with it. Now let me, let me just get to this point right quick. I want you to consider these two conditions. The, on one side, you have two conditions, and I'm going to try to get through this in the last couple minutes that I have. On these two sides, you have two conditions, two different social problems. And I want you to see the comparison here. One of them, you have a decreased likelihood of successful marriage. It brings with it a 5 to 10 year decrease in life expectancy, chronic hepatitis, uh, uh, fatal esophageal cancer, pneumonia, internal bleeding, severe mental disabilities, and, and some irreversible, higher incidence of suicide, uh, let's see, higher uh, evidence of suicide, low likelihood effects eliminated without eliminating the condition itself. In other words, it's very likely you're going to eliminate the whole problem without uh, the, the side effects without eliminating the condition. Only 30% are likelihood of elimination through extensive treatment, but it is high among the motivated. All right? So people who are motivated to, to get rid of this treatment or to get rid of this problem, they can do it. Now, on the other side, on the other side, we have people who have a decrease in uh, successful uh, marriage, likelihood of successful marriage. You have uh, a 20 to 30 year decrease in life expectancy, chronic hepatitis, fatal immune disorders, a, a disease associated with, with uh, cancers, uh, frequent rectal cancer, multiple bowel infectious disease, higher incidence of suicide, uh, very low likelihood uh, effects uh, that the effects are eliminated without eliminating the condition itself, 50% likelihood of elimination through extensive treatment, and near 100% among the motivated. So uh, f it, it has a high chance of being cured, if you will, uh, especially among the highly motivated. But now, you don't see what the two conditions are? The two conditions we're talking about is homo uh, homosexuality and alcoholism. Now, friends, we recognize the dangers of alcoholism. We recognize the health dangers. We recognize the consequences. We recognize the social woes and ills that come with it. All right? Families destroyed. Health destroyed. Five to ten year decrease in life expectancy. Only 30% likelihood of elimination through extensive treatment. But over here on the homosexual side, look at the, look at the cost. 25 to 30 year decrease in life expectancy, chronic hepatitis, cancers, uh, diseases, higher incidence of suicide, F but 50%, here's the hope, 50% likelihood of elimination through extensive treatment and it's nearly 100% among the highly motivated. People who are motivated to change. Now, friends, when people say you're born that way, don't buy into that. You're not born that way. 
If you were born that way, you couldn't change. Friends, we're trying to give you some information about uh, a lifestyle that's hurting our society, that's hurting our community, that's hurting individuals in it, and we want to help you. No, we're not haters. We're simply giving you the truth. Hope this has helped. Stay tuned for a religious view after the news. Remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You'll always get a word from the Lord, and then you can do your own religious review. Have a good night. And local programming for you. Uh, just a note that at 6.30 tonight, I'll share with you an email I received in regards to a telephone call on our talk segment yesterday from a man who does not like it because sometimes uh, I support law enforcement and their jobs, and so I'll share that with you. It's from a wife of a law enforcement officer. That's coming up in just a little bit. Uh, and for our viewers watching us on WMDV 44.1 and 44.2, welcome to you as well, Martinsville and Danville. Bruce Hedrick has lots of uh, live programming there from WMDV and our Martinsville station as well. Right now, though, let's jump into the news from across the region and see what's happening. Actually, we do have a lot of uh, local area news, but we're going to start out with uh, national news. Scarred by scandal, Representative Anthony Weiner of New York announced his resignation from Congress earlier today, toppled by lewd photos that he took of himself sent to women online and then adamantly lied about after being caught. Weiner says in his resignation, I'm here today to again apologize for the personal mistakes I have made and the embarrassment I have called. I make this apology to my neighbors, to my constituents, but I particularly, but I make it particularly to my wife Uma. Now, Wiener's wife was absent as he announced his decision as she was 10 days ago when he admitted having sent those inappropriate messages known as sexting, which included photos, to several women online. Wiener said that he hoped to, main, to remain in Congress but conceded his predicament had made it impossible. Instead, he said he would resign so, quote, my colleagues can get back to work, my neighbors can choose a new representative, and most importantly, that my wife and I can continue to heal from the damage I have caused, unquote. Weiner made his announcement at the same Senior Citizen Center in Brooklyn where he announced his candidacy for the New York City Council back in 1992. He did not take any questions from the crowd. By the way, that crowd included hecklers and radio shock jocks vying for attention at what became a New York media event. The 46-year-old Wiener has been on leave from the House since last weekend. He did not, he is not rather, and seen in public since telling reporters on Saturday morning that he intended to return to work. Wiener's political problems began back on May the 28th. That's when BigGovernment.com, a website run by conservative commentator Andrew Breitbart, posted a lewd photograph of an underwear-clad crotch and said it was sent from Wiener's Twitter account to a woman in Seattle. But again, news on the national front from those of you who have not been following it today. Uh, scarred by scandal, Representative Anthony Weiner of New York has announced his resignation from Congress. And of course, we will be following up. If there's any new developments on that, we will certainly let you know more about that. Well, as we take a closer look on what's happening in the Star News region, WFMY News 2 is reporting that a standoff in Kernersville has ended with one man being taken into custody. Police were called to a home on Pisgah Circle just before noon.